Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. This will be a very exciting episode, it will be about a kitchen installation, more exactly a magnet kitchen installation in UK. I made this video because a lot of people are asking for a step-by-step -step video of how to of how to install a kitchen. I hope this video will be clear enough for everybody. But if there is anything that is not clear enough and you will need obviously more information, just please leave a comment below and I will uh, try to explain this in my next kitchen install. So first step in the kitchen installation will be to measure up for your floor and see the level of the floor. You need to see if the floor is running straight or is running up or down. So basically you try to find out what the difference in floor it is from one side of the kitchen to the other side of the kitchen. We have about 5 to 10 millimeters uh, differences in the floor level. After this we need to decide the measurements for the top of the base units. Best way to do this is to find out what will be the total height of the kitchen base units including the worktop on top. Once that you know that you just deduct the thickness of the worktop and you get the total height of the kitchen base units. The most common height for a kitchen base units with the worktop on top will be between 88 centimeters and 92 centimeters. This can depend obviously of the height of the customer. If the customer is obviously a tall person, you might speak with him and maybe do it a bit higher. If he's obviously a shorter person, then you might have to do it a bit lower. But this is something that you will have to decide with the customer. Once that you know the height of the base units, just transfer that on the wall and draw a line across the, the walls. With a magnet kitchen you will find out that the most common height for a base unit is about 87 centimeters plus the worktop obviously. So we started the installation with our first unit which is a corner unit. That unit will go on the left hand wall. Nine times out of ten you will start the installation in the corner, working your way out. There are obviously exceptions where you start on the other side. I will explain that later, but here we started in the corner. We did cut the unit to accommodate some pipes. I will show you in a moment what we did. There was a gas pipe that we couldn't move because the gas man that I'm um, using it was in holiday. Luckily for us the, the gas pipe was about on the top of the unit so it wasn't interfering with anything, anything that would be inside that unit. When you accommodate pipes uh, behind the unit or inside the unit and you have to do a cutout just make sure that cutout is a is couple of millimeters bigger than the pipe so make sure it doesn't touch in the pipe especially on the back obviously no one gonna see that so be a bit generous don't make them like too tight when the unit was level we did secure it to the wall using two angle brackets one on the left one on the right make sure these angle brackets have adjustable holes so basically what I'm saying that you might have to move this unit either left or right just a couple of millimeters so make sure these uh, brackets have adjustable holes. I like to secure this um, unit on the wall and obviously before that I make sure it's level in all directions. Um, soon as it's level I will secure it to the wall and then I will uh, attach the corner post you will see that in the next um, images but first of all has to be level and it has to be secured to the wall. So if the units are level you will have an easy life putting the doors and adjusting the doors and the drawers. If the units are, are out of level you will have 
a very very difficult time to adjust the doors. So this is how it looks. This is the first unit installed. You see one bracket on the wall, one bracket supporting this bracing piece. Um, that bracing piece, if you notice, was the other way around, like the one on the front. But this way we had to cut it completely because of that cut, that gas pipe. So we decided we're just going to turn this the other way around. And this way we only have to cut a bit, so we still have very good, um, very good support there. You will see that I like to use my spirit levels to um, check the level of the kitchen. I do have a laser level, a good laser level, but I don't, I don't like to adjust the units using the laser level. For me, the spirit level works a lot more better. Because with the laser, if you're not careful and you just move it slightly, uh, you could end up obviously doing things wrong and then you will have to do them again. So for me, the spirit level, it works better than the laser. But like I said, everybody is different. Other people will might look different. So in here, you will see me installing the corner post. Basically, I measure 500 from the left to the middle of the unit and I do a mark I do a mark up and I do a mark down and then I will uh, I'll put the corner post on those marks and check with the le with the level and see if it's straight uh, if I'm happy and it's level then I put a bit of um, mitre bond and just stick it in place following those lines after that, I just go ahead and um, secure it with um, two angle brackets or two blocks. After the corner post is secured, I just go ahead and install the blanking panel. So basically the blanking panel goes on the right hand side of the unit. And that is just blanking the unit off so things cannot fall down from the actual unit. The unit will have to be square and level before the blanking panel installation otherwise after you install this panel you can't change that uh, level or the, or the square of the unit anymore I use a couple of screws to secure this in place so just screw it straight into the unit as you can see the blanking panel has two colors so obviously it's white inside and brown, brown on the outside, so make sure the matching colors is inside the cupboard. This is how our corner unit looks installed. So you can see the blanking panel, three screws at the top, three screws at the bottom, and three screws on the side. Corner post, you see, inside, no gaps, nice and tidy, and two angle brackets. I did attach this uh, piece on the back of the corner post and I did these marks. So basically looking at the marks on the right hand side of the mark will be the unit and on the left hand side of the mark will be the door. So we just marked the thickness of the door and the unit will be on that line. Obviously that um, piece that we attach on the back of the corner post has to be either flash or slightly in, but definitely not on the outside of the corner post. The extra piece of timber that we installed on the back of the corner post will give me extra timber to fix this unit into. So basically this unit will get fixed into that, um, into that corner post. Because we needed to shift this unit, the second one, to the right about 20 millimeters, we decided to put in between the first unit and the second unit a filler panel, which is about 16 millimeters. So we cut this filler panel just a slim piece, just obviously make that difference. We cut this uh, filler panel 
the same size with the units or the same height with the units so we didn't put this filler panel straight on the floor and I will explain you later why we didn't do that when we are installing kitchen we always using a truck so is a very good tool for kitchen installation it gives you a lot of flexibility it gives you a lot of speed and the final product so basically the cuts are very very good if you don't have one obviously you can use a circular saw but if you are in a trade it doing kitchen installation you should think of uh, getting one of these is a light is a game changer the reason why we didn't put this filler panel straight on the floor like you will normally do is because then you will have a, a small piece of plinth that will have to be cut and joined in the corner not very easy and it doesn't look very nice this way panel the panel being the same height with the kitchen base unit then the plinth can run continu continuously from one side to the other and it would look much cleaner much nicer Let me show you the filler panel cut. You can see this is a very clean cut, no chips. Always cut the material on the back, never cut the material on the front face. Always cut it obviously on the back and you will have no chips. I did attach the filler panel to the unit using these uh, quick clamps. I left the panel proud of the unit 21 millimeters so when the door will be installed the panel will be flush with the doors let me show you the filler panel is it secured in place with the clamps is ready to be secured with uh, with screws regarding the screws obviously try to hide them as much as possible so if you know that you will have hinges put them behind the hinges but at the same time don't go crazy about hiding the screws I mean look inside this cupboard there's plenty of holes for the for the pin for the pins for the shells so like I said don't go crazy in hiding the screws and never but never put a screw where you can't reach after the worktop is been installed in my opinion you should never put any screws that you can't reach like I said uh, I've seen people uh, putting screws behind of the unit so basically where the unit has that gap for service for pipes for cables whatever um, I've been in two cases where I needed to move once there was a panel an end panel that I had to move and in the other case I have to remove a unit um, obviously both haven't been installed by me and trust me that was not possible to do any of this so like I said always put the screw where you can reach so like I said I've been in a case where I had to remove one 500 base unit uh, because of the plumber he needed to do something there and apparently there was something behind that unit um, they wanted me to remove this unit and then put it back when the plumber did his job so obviously this unit has been secured to the other unit on the back you couldn't reach that it's been the worktop which was a granite worktop was stuck with silicon proper down so I took this unit out in probably 20 pieces now imagine if that was something that you couldn't buy off shelf so luckily they are standard and you can get one off the shelf and obviously just put the door the old door back on but imagine if it's like a, like a measure to made or something like that so like I said look how many holes are inside this unit another one or two more holes like an extra screw hole it won't make a difference so like I said just you know don't go crazy about hiding the screws no one will notice anyway when securing the second unit into the corner post a good idea is to clamp them down uh, together so so they don't move um, at the same time you have to use a countersink uh, to countersink because the screw will have to go through the unit 
through the filler panel into the corner post well into the support that is attached on the corner post so make sure they are clamped together otherwise they might move and you might end up obviously being um, out of plumb and like I said that will uh, make a difference when you installing the doors or the drawers when you're fixing units together try not to sunk in the screws too much so basically try to put them so they just flush or just just a bit in like like you do with the drywall the more you put the screw the more you sink a screw in the more damage that screw will make if you have to take it off from some reason after the unit was plumb in every direction I just go ahead and secure it to the wall with two angle brackets one on the left one on the right a good tip will be when you adjusting the height of a unit like this this is an 800 unit so basically every unit from 800 up like 800 900 thousand base unit they they will have at least five or six six legs so i will put the middle legs up so they don't touching the floor and i will um, i will adjust the four legs on the corners and then when i'm happy then i can drop the other legs down the one is the middle if you keep the middle legs down you will find out that is a bit trickier to adjust the height of the unit and and make it level Right now you see me connecting these two units together so basically I'm cutting a piece of wood and connect these two units together at the back. Very important to do this especially if you have uh, heavy worktops like granite or quartz or marbles or anything that is heavy will put a lot of pressure on those, uh, on those units in the corner. I will show you more tips about how to secure the units before the worktop installation, before a heavy worktop installation. At the moment we just have a normal laminate worktop so we don't have to worry about that. But as soon as I will have a, a heavy worktop I will show you how we do it. Okay, let me show you now what I mean by uh, that bracing piece. You can see here are the brackets, so the unit is secured to the wall and this is the bracing piece that goes from one unit to, unit to the other. I just stuck it down with some miter bond and then I attach three screws, two on the left, one on the right, so now it's solid, it doesn't go anywhere, the corner is secure, so um, we can move on to the next unit. So we just installed the other unit which is a corner unit again I haven't filmed this because it's the same process like we did with the one on the left so blanking panel corner post angle brackets secure to the wall on the right hand side there's no need to do it on the left because we have the other unit securing the wall so yeah exactly like the first one I would like to mention that this is a mixture between ready assembled units and flat pack units. So the unit that I'm um, installing now is a ready assembled unit. You can see the edges are grey, the other ones have uh, white edges. This is how magnet kitchens are designed, so the flat pack units have white edges and the ready assembled units have uh, grey or silver edges. Once that the doors are installed you won't see this uh, difference. I personally prefer the silver edges because they are much more less evident once that you have the door installed. Let me explain this. Um, so what I mean by that is once that you have the door installed and you have let's say you have a dark um, dark doors like a dark blue or a dark green or a dark grey under the oven you are always gonna have a bit of a gap if it's white you will definitely see that if it's this uh, silver edge will be less evident less uh, visible a good advice will be to check the, 
the front of the units with a straight edge to make sure that they are running in a straight line. I found out that sometimes the walls are not straight. If you have a wall that doesn't run straight and you will have to adjust the units to fit that wall, my advice would be do it but at the same time don't do it too sharp. I saw a case when someone was trying to lose 15 millimeters so 1.5 millimeters with just one 600 unit so basically he twisted that unit so both sides of both edges of the unit like left and right was touching the wall but you could clearly see that that unit is twisted so you don't have to have too much experience to see that even someone with no experience could see that that unit is not right, something is not right there. A very good place to lose some of these differences in the wall would be the space where you have a freestanding appliances, so basically a freestanding dishwasher, a freestanding washing machine, an extractor hood that is not integrated in the unit, um, a fridge that is freestanding, that those are the places where you can obviously lose these differences. Here you will see us installing the tower unit or the larder unit and the side panel. This panel gets installed like all the other end panels that you install in the kitchen. This particular panel is uh, wider than the unit and is also taller than the unit, so you will have to cut this twice. Some panels you find that they are the right uh, width, which is standard, and you don't have to cut them. Uh, all you have to obviously cut either the top or the bottom for the height. First of all, we did three marks on this panel, top, bottom and middle, which will, which will um, show us the panel overhang over the unit. That will be obviously dictated by the door. And after that, we measure up and see how much we need to cut the back of the panel in order to align the marking of the panel with the actual unit. After that, we secure the panel in place with uh, screws. Just to let you know what screws we are using to secure these panels in place, we always use screws that are 5 mm smaller than the total thickness of the panel and the side of the unit, side of the carcass. You saw me measuring for the other end panel, so I measured from the floor to the top of the unit. If that measurement is the same, I will cut the top of the panel. If those measurements are different by more than 2 millimeters, in this case I will cut the bottom of the panel. You can pack one or two millimeters, but I wouldn't pack more than that. And I like my panels to be sitting on the floor because this gives a lot more strength to the kitchen. So basically the legs doesn't take the whole weight of the kitchen and this panel does take some of that weight. In here you see us uh, cutting the end panel. Like I said, always cut the back never cut on the front because you might get some chips no matter how good the blade is no matter what type of uh, cell you are using you will find that sometime you get chips especially with uh, this material for this uh, end panel I have measured from the wall to the edge of the unit and I just added another 21 millimeters for the door I checked five different places so I measure at the top at the bottom at the middle and two measurements in between if it's fairly straight you just cut it in one go if not you might have to describe it to match the wall from my point of view a good installation of an end panel is a panel that doesn't have more than two millimeters gap against the wall in most of the cases you will have a unit that will go against this panel or you will have a splashback, either a, a normal splashback or a tile splashback. So in these cases obviously you have a bit more room to play 
but if that is an end panel that will just stand alone and will be visible you need to have a fairly minimum gap something that you can easily close with decorator's cork or with silicon so like i said i go for maximum two millimeters or less in our case on the right hand side of the unit we'll have another wall unit and we'll have a splashback so lots of room to play there but on the left hand side we're just having a freestanding free so there is the case where we need to go pretty tight to the wall you will see me now marking for the last unit of this side and that will be the bridging unit the same scenario this unit gets installed 21 millimeters inside of the end panel for the door that was a tight fit we just just fitted that unit in now is a good time to explain you why i said in the in the beginning of the video that nine times out of ten you will start in the corner with the corner unit and work your way out so that bridging unit that is above the fridge is an 800 unit now imagine that the space left for this unit will be about 5 10 15 millimeters smaller what you're gonna do in this case a quick answer would be to cut that unit down make it smaller and then cut the door uh, put the edgings back on the door where you cut it obviously and make it so no one can see that you actually did that if you don't have other alternatives this is something that you can do but bear in mind in order to do this your door will have to be a flat panel door and not a shaker style door or anything that has a model on it another option will be to start in this corner with the bridging unit and the tower unit and work your way out as you probably know most of the kitchens will have a service gap at the back so in this particular case we can move the units about four and a half five centimeters so basically you can move those units back to the wall of a maximum of five and a half centimeters but that's mean you can't have any pipes or anything at the back obviously the more you cut from a back of a unit the more visible will be onto the work surface because you will have to obviously cut that down as well there will be cases when none of this method will work so you won't be able to cut the unit down and you will not be able to move the units back so in these cases you will just have to get a smaller unit and have an infill panel at the end and now going back to the units install you just saw us installing a wall unit which is just install against this uh, larger unit you see me clamping the panel in place with those quick clamps and secure it in place I will not give you any measurements because all the kitchen units are slightly different all you have to know is that these wall units will have to be at the same level with the tower unit now I will take a spirit level and draw a line down from the end panel going down on the base unit then I will mark the center of that base unit the one with the three drawers so basically there will have the hob installed after that I will make another mark that will be exactly from the middle of this unit onto the right will have to be matching the one on the left so basically you will have the same distance from the middle of that unit on the left and on the right so when you installing your extractor hood will be centralized in between those two units and above the hob after this we'll know exactly where to install the other unit the, the other wall unit the one on the right hand side of the hob so we mark that we put the clips on and then <clears throat> sometime like you'll see here it's easier to put the side panel or the end panel when the unit is down it's obviously much easier to to keep it in place you don't have to play with the panel and hold it with one hand and put the clamps on
it's always easier if you have someone with you that can give you a hand is obviously a lot more quicker a lot more easier some people just working by themselves I can understand that having two guys installing a kitchen sometime is not obviously very productive it's not very cost effective but because we're not doing just kitchens we also do other things and most of the kitchens that we do we do a bit of tiling a bit of flooring a lot of other bits like plumbing decorating and stuff like that so for us it does work um, okay 90-90% of the cases we are very very effective being two and also cost effective most of these units uh, in this kitchen was flat pack so I had Alin on the other room installing obviously the units together assembling the units together and I was putting them on the wall or on the floor he was giving me a hand when I was needing so for us it does work um, pretty pretty good in terms of uh, cost effective you just saw me checking the level from one uni unit to the other make sure they all are in the same level even there will be nothing in between to show a difference obviously you need to be dead on um, trying to have this as level as possible obviously you will see me here using the level on the top and then on the side I will repeat myself by saying this but the more plumb and level the units are the less you will have to struggle to adjust the doors or the drawers so this will be a two-part video uh, first part is about to finish all we'll have to do is to cut the unit that will um, incorporate the boiler um, so you will see me putting a level on the top of this unit so that will give me the height of the actually unit that will house all the boiler very important here when you do this uh, unit that um, house all the boiler never go too tight and always think ahead because that boiler will have to be serviced once a year and obviously sometime will have to be repaired or replaced so make it so way that a gas engineer can access the boiler and take the he can take the cover off and he can do all the work that needs to be done on the boiler. Also, the boiler flue will have to be visible any time, so you cannot box that in um, in terms of obviously a fixed boxing. So the boiler flue will have to be visible and accessible at all the time. In this case this wall unit will have no other purposes than to cover up the boiler there might be cases where you have a larger unit or a tower unit and you have the boiler there and also you need to do some kind of storage and you have to obviously cover the pipes put some shelves but there's a different scenario in here the unit just covered the boiler in the end I will show you what we achieved in the first part of the video so you can see all these units are fixed you will see that uh, we installed the boiler unit as well so the unit that uh, incorporates the boiler you will see a bracing piece at the bottom because we have to completely remove the bottom part of the unit we just installed this bracing piece to keep the unit together nice and square till we actually install this and secure this in the wall after we did that uh, we'll remove the the bracing piece and also we'll have a pelmet at the bottom that will hide all this plus the pipes and every single valve under the boiler will be accessible which it should be like that this will be all for this uh, first part of the video i will have a few important tips that only applies for a magnet kitchen installation but those tips will be on the second video so if you don't want to miss that please like and subscribe if you obviously like the video and i will see you next time thank you for watching